Hello, welcome to the Monday, March 30th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. With COVID-19 absolutely dominating the news, uh, there is, of course, tons and tons of scams that are going around in order to take advantage of this situation. We have our domain classification project going. If you haven't seen it yet, I think I talked about it uh, on Friday's podcast. You can help out and classify some of the domains that contain keywords like COVID-19 or Corona in order to figure out which ones of them are currently being actively used. Also created a quick video with some of the initial results. Had uh, over the weekend uh, quite a few users that were actively participating in this. So thanks a lot for those who spent some time on this. I think uh, right now we have about 7,000 or so domains classified. Still have to do a quick summary on this. Last week, I talked about how Google is trying to make it more difficult to use a fake USB device to act as a keyboard and enter malicious commands on Linux. Well, interestingly, Trustfave analyzed some malware that apparently did just that against Windows trying to use a malicious USB device to then inject keystrokes. Now, unlike with a simple phishing attack where the attacker just sends you an email, this attack actually arrived as a physical letter and claimed to be a thank you gift from Best Buy. Overall, I have to say it looked uh, plausible. There is a Best Buy gift card included and in order to use it, there is a USB stick that claims to have items listed that you may order using that gift card. Now, as soon as you enter the USB stick into your system, it will actually turn out to be a keyboard. And this keyboard will then type out a PowerShell command. The specific USB stick used here is not the standard rubber ducky that I talked about last week, but a very similar device that's apparently available from a Taiwanese e-commerce website for about $7. So in that sense, uh, reasonably affordable. Now, once the PowerShell script runs, it will download additional uh, scripts from a website. What's sort of interesting as part of these scripts, it will also pop up a fake error message telling you that the USB stick you inserted turned out to be corrupt. So at this point, probably most users will just discard it and move on, not knowing that their system was just hijacked by this malicious script. So in essence, it's kind of like phishing, but instead of trusting that the user will click the link uh, here. Well, uh, the USB stick sort of clicks the link for you. And that of course makes the exploit more reliable, even though at a um, higher cost to the attacker, something that you're probably going to see more in targeted attacks. And according to a report by the FBI, uh, this attack also used in some cases teddy bears that came with USB sticks attached and of course also then tricked the user into connecting those teddy bears to their system. The FBI also attributes these attacks to the Fin7 group, sometimes also called Karbanak group. It's commonly associated with sort of financial motivated crime. So essentially organized crime, less nation state attacks and uh, going after typically the hospitality industry. In the past, they, for example, compromised then credit card systems and such and stole credit card numbers from large hotel chains and the restaurant chains. And Trend Micro as well as Kaspersky are writing about some malware infecting iOS devices that they found on Hong Kong news sites. Apparently uh, here uh, the attacker is trying to target in particular with people in Hong Kong that are interested in COVID-19 of all things of course and then they're posting news articles with links to malicious files that are trying to exploit 
iOS. Now, in order to be available, you have to run an older version of iOS, in particular 12.1 and 12.2. At this point, I don't think there is sort of a known exploit that would work in this drive-by fashion against a current version of iOS. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening. As usual, if you find anything interesting out there, uh, please let us know. If you like this podcast, uh, please tweet about it, post about it to your friends, whatever social media you're using, and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.